I am overwhelmed with emotions. You can't even do this with the effects. I think we're out of a job, guys. This update is way too powerful for video creators. It honestly feels like it was released two years too early. Google's just dropped their most advanced AI image model, and it fixes pretty much every problem we've had with generative images. From keeping characters consistent, to blending multiple elements in a scene, to finally getting results that look accurate and realistic. It's called Nano Banana, and it's actually available right now on Artlist, who is sponsoring this video. I have used Artlist for all my music, sound effects, and footage, so I knew I had to, of course, try this out to see just how powerful it really is. And if you want to follow along, check out the link in the description so you can try it out yourself. But before we begin, let me be clear. I believe that AI tools should empower your creativity and not completely replace your workflow. That's why I want to show you how you can use Nano Banana as your secret weapon. That way, you can skip all the painful and tedious stuff and spend more time actually creating. So the first thing I want to go over is one of the most exciting features that I saw during the demo, being able to take one shot and then generate different angles of the same shot. So I'm going to try that out with Artlist. We're going to go over to the AI image and video generation tab, and then we'll do image to image. And then I'm going to give it an image and then try and change out the angle. So for example, I have an image over here from my latest video about running gun gear. And I'm thinking like, oh, what if there was an establishing shot from like a bird's eye view, like a drone shot? That way it feels like there's a better sense of space before going into a shot like this. So let's drag and drop that image in. And then we'll type something like bird's eye top down view of this man walking down the road. And then although this is a text to image and image to image model right now, you can use tools that um, allow you to change from text to video and then use that as B-roll and inserts in your video. If you miss the shot because you know you had limited time with your actor or location or you know, you realize in the edit that you didn't have enough coverage, which I am most definitely guilty of before. We're almost there, 99%. I'm excited. It could turn out completely terrible, by the way. As with any image generation platforms, like sometimes it gets a little janky, but I'm really excited to see what the results are for this update. And after a few minutes, this is what it came up with. It's pretty insane. I'm still wearing the backpack and it's a little blurry and it could be a little bit higher fidelity, but it's pretty good, especially considering how it's a completely different angle that I would not imagine it looking like. The light placements are actually not too bad as well. If I do a little side-by-side -side comparison, this is what it looks like. And I feel like it's passable. Like there were some areas that it could have improved in. Like for example, the pillars on the left over here for my reference image doesn't appear over here. But I think after maybe one or two more generations, I can get even closer. But the lighting and everything looks legit. And if I wanted to use this as a video to actually put in my edit, of course, I can go to this tab over here where I do image to video and then import that image that was generated. And then I can always prompt it and say something like man walking down the road. They even have a suggested prompt over here that says begin with a high aerial shot of a deserted road surrounded by tall buildings. Slow zoom in towards a lumpy. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, let's give this a try actually. All right, let's check this out. Okay, so this is pretty interesting. Now, the only change that I would really want to make is that I want the man, which is me, to keep walking down the road because that's what's happening in the original shot. But other than that, this looks pretty good in the sense of perspective. And it was quite faithful to the suggested prompt, which was doing this little zoom in towards the person. So let's give this another try where we say it's a high angle aerial shot and there's a road. The man in the middle is walking forward in slow motion. And I made one more time. And let's check this out. Honestly, not too bad. It's a little bit janky, but it is actually tracking my movement walking forward. It's in the same direction. There's just some smudginess that's happening in the frame. But if I use this shot for like maybe a split second and I slow it down even more in After Effects, I think it's actually quite passable. Now, another application is, let's say that you have a talent, your subject, calibrate depth of field and they're looking off, but for some reason, you wanna make a slight adjustment in the actor's performance. Maybe you want them to look over a camera. You can actually take a still image and save it somewhere. In this case, this is my image. Import that in, image to image. And let's say that I actually want myself to be looking at camera. So I can say something like, have the subject face toward camera and generate. And this is the result kind of scary how accurate it is. I mean, it looks mostly like me, but it basically reimagined what the other side of my face would look like. There's some weirdness with the hair because there's some slight lack of texture, but honestly, it looks pretty realistic. And then just like before, I can use this image and change it to a video and it'll look something kind of like this. 
Now, the next thing I want to cover is last minute changes in post, because how many times has a director or producer asked you to fix things in post? I know it's like nails on chalkboard, but it is the reality. And as much as we would wish they would plan things properly so that you can avoid the situation, sometimes it is inevitable. And I want to show you some ways that you can use Nano Banana to erase or change objects in your videos. So for example, from my most recent video, I have this nice little, it just had to be reliable, arcing shot of this lens over here. But let's say I realized that this camera in the background is actually not doing it for me. Like it's kind of distracting. I want to just focus on the lens. So I can save a still image from that. I have it here. And then I'm going to import it to the image to image like this. And then write something like remove the camera in the background and hit generate. I'm excited. Here we go. Boom. Look at that. It's just the lens and it looks exactly the same. It looks, I'm overwhelmed with emotions. I cannot believe there is no actual camera over here. And like the before and after, it looks super clean. And if I feed this into the image to video generation and add that I want an arcing shot, it looks like this. Okay, but let's say you're working on a short film or a narrative piece or a TV show. And of course you see something in the background that you're not supposed to keep in there. Maybe it's a brand or a logo or whatever that you have no clearance for. So usually you would Greek the sign and then put that in. So it looks kind of like the same logo, but it's not explicitly it. Um, you know, McDonald's might be like, Wick Donalds or something like that. And sometimes you have to fix that in post and it's a pain because you have to be an After Effects expert. Well, now you can use Nano Banana and you can grab a still like this, drop that still in over here and then change the W on the sign to an M with the same texture and material. And what it spits out is this. Doesn't look too bad. Do a little side by side. I can definitely use the M and then track it back onto the W, which is a very basic technique in After Effects. And it ends up looking something kind of like this. Now, another application is changing your lighting. For continuity purposes, maybe most of your shots are shot in daylight. But for some reason, you only had a pocket of time during the night and you had, you know, rented your equipment and it was only, you got to return the next day. Whatever reason it may be, and you need to change the lighting. Of course, that's usually not possible, but with the power of Nano Banana, we can try something like this. A shot like this where I'm chilling in the middle of the night, we're gonna export the frame again, take this image, import it in, and then say, show me this scene in the middle of the day. Hit generate. Boom, look at that. It's a little off, but it's 90% there. It's got the same pose, it basically looks like me with the same shirt, but it looks like a shot in broad daylight. You can't even do this with VFX. You would have to like reshoot it. I think we're out of a job, guys. <laughs> Here's a side by side, by the way. It's slightly off, but this is after just one generation, by the way. So after a couple or just, you know, adjusting your prompt just very slightly, you can get super, super close. Like it's even got like the shadow correctly. Like it's facing the same way. It even kept like the little stain that's near like my chest over here, over here. Like the texture and I'm blown away. Okay, so of course, another thing you may need to find yourself fixing in post is removing things. It would be insane to remove the crowd of people in front of me, right? You would basically just say, no, it's not possible. I mean, it is. With the right amount of patience, rotoscoping, with getting a clean plate of, like it's hard basically is what I'm trying to get at. But if we export this over to crowd over here, select folder, click okay. And then take that image over here with all the people in the background. And I tell it to remove all the people in the background for this scene. And hit generate. Is it really going to remove every single person in the background. Because if it does, it would mean that in a lot of cases, you don't have to rotoscope anymore. And that is probably the least creative part of the post-processing pipeline. Oh, this is what it spat out. So there's still a couple people left, but for the most part, it got rid of that really dense crowd that was directly over my left shoulder. For the rest of it, I could probably just feed the image back in and then erase the rest of the people. With a little bit more work, this is what it ends up looking like. 
All right, so we know that it can erase people, but can it add people in? Let's say that, you know, your scene is feeling a little lonely and you want it to feel more warm and feel like it's populated and that people are kind of hanging out. So let's say that there's a shot like this where I'm walking off, but I feel like, oh, there could be a group of people here to make things look nicer. Take a screenshot, save it, and put that in over here. Add a group of young adults hanging out near the left side of frame. Oh, okay. That's not bad at all. There's some muddiness over here where we can't see the faces that well, but it is slightly out of focus, so I think it's passable. And then once we turn it into a video and track into the scene, this is what it looks like. Somehow, it was able to get the lighting just right, so it feels like they're actually part of the scene. If I didn't tell you this was AI generated, would you believe that this was actual people in the scene? I know how frustrating it can be to watch a video that doesn't go in depth enough, but to please the YouTube algorithm, I have to keep viewing retention in mind. So if you're looking for longer step-by-step -step tutorials for techniques that I regularly use or project breakdowns, then I built a community called Frame by Frame. It's for creators, filmmakers, or video editors who are serious about growing. I felt like I was stuck for the longest time in this loop of burnout and feeling like I was falling behind. In hindsight, what I really needed was clarity. I needed honest feedback about my work and other creators to push me to reach my goals. That's exactly what you'll find here. If you're feeling overwhelmed and lost in your creative journey, I made this for you. You can join for free to connect with other like-minded creators or get access to my private lessons and channels to gain 17 years of my experience in making videos. So if you're a creator with a growth mindset, then come join us with the link below. So the next way you can use Nano Banana is by restoring archival media. So if you have an old photo that you want to use in a short film or a documentary, you can restore it and then make it feel like it matches the same polish as the rest of the video. Because if you're shooting on like modern cameras and everything looks all sharp and sleek, and then you cut to these old photos, like yes, it brings a sense of nostalgia, but you also want it to feel visually pleasant. Um, if you want to modernize those photos and restore it, then this is how you do it. So if you look up like a random old photo like this, Go for the first one. Let's try this one. Now guys, what happens when I drag and drop this photo and I say something like restore this photo so it's sharp and feels like it was shot on a modern DSLR and add appropriate colors to this scene. How good can it be? I am in awe. I'm like speechless. Look at the colors. Like it still retains the sense of nostalgia. The colors look pretty appropriate. Like it's guessing the colors, but like even like the Coca-Cola bottle, it looks like the same tint as you would expect from a glass bottle like that. So if we throw it side by side, we can see that it's really accurate for the most part, except the man who looks like Elvis Presley. His eyes are closed in the original photo, but it's open in the other one. All we have to do is really change the prompt so that we say that the man's eyes are closed and I'm sure that that would fix it. This shouldn't even be possible. Imagine telling someone that you can store photos and make it look this good. It would feel like wishcraft. All right, so the next application for creators is creating dynamic storyboards and previs material or mood boards that you can use in your pitch deck when you're trying to get producers or investors to believe in your project and actually fund it because that's really important. If you don't have the money, you can't make your projects. And in order to do that and communicate your ideas, because sometimes you'll tell you know producers like, this is my idea, this is what I have in my head, it's gonna look like that or that. And you describe it with words, but like you have an image and they have an image and your images do not match up. So now to get rid of that discrepancy, you can actually create the image that you have in your head so they can see what you see. And how we do that is by meshing together different elements, such as let's say we want a character in this outfit. And obviously this outfit, if you were to make it in real life, it would be super expensive. But again, we're trying to convince people that it's worth making this outfit for this film or commercial or video that you have in mind. And let's say that you want to put that character in like an abandoned warehouse. And then you're looking at places that you can rent, right? Like I'm on Geekster over here and you have a video shoot uh, located in Vancouver, Canada. Like I have a warehouse in mind, a very specific one, not just any warehouse. You can go to like the photos or whatever, and then you can look up a spot like, oh, it would be so cool if we had the, the the samurai warrior over here or maybe shot like this will work better it's a nice open space so we save this photo okay so we have the image of the location we have the image of our samurai and we'll say something like full body shot of this samurai in the location at night being lit by some neon lights because that's the vibe i'm looking for that's part of the mood that i want to communicate we hit generate. It's not bad. 
for a previs. It even like imagined what the lower part of the samurai would look like because all it really knew was the top part. See, we do a side by side, basically using the original image and then reimagining the bottom and then it added some neon lights. And like, yeah, it looks a little janky. It doesn't look realistic because the lighting doesn't 100% match, but for a previs, it gets the idea across. So another reason that you do previs because maybe you don't have a specific model or access to an actor because they're an A-list actor and you can't afford them and it's just like, hey, imagine if like, you know, Timothy Chalamet was wearing this armor in, a, in an epic sci-fi and then the producer's like, that sounds dumb. I wanna see it to believe it. So we're gonna take this image, drag and drop it and write something like, have uh, Timothy Chalamet wear this outfit in front of a concrete background. All right, let's see what that looks like. Boom, show that to your producer. Not a stupid idea after all, huh? Right, looks pretty sick, huh? And it's a great way of testing different camera angles, lighting setups, uh, set designs before committing to a crew and a budget. So the next thing I wanna go over is thumbnail variation. Now, if you're a YouTuber and a content creator like me, then you'll know how important it is to have a captivating thumbnail. But sometimes you're not sure what is going to work and what people are gonna click on. But now with YouTube having an A, B, and C test feature built into their platform, it is a no-brainer to take advantage of that and also to utilize Nano Banana to create variations of your thumbnail. So you don't have to just gamble all in on one thumbnail, you can create three and then see what hits best. So you can take one image. So in this case, this is a thumbnail that I've been using for my running gun video, my latest video. And let's say this expression isn't doing it. Maybe I should smile more. Well, what I can do is import that in or say, have the man smiling then generate. This is where we really test the whole character consistency. Is it gonna really look like me? I'm smiling. I look happy. I look like I actually care about what I'm shooting. I think this would have been a better thumbnail than my original one, actually. If I put it side by side, you can see that it clearly looks the same. Just me smiling. But maybe it's not the facial expression that people are clicking through for. Let's try to change my glasses to something else. Have him wear sunglasses instead because maybe that's what's going to get people to click that cool factor of wearing sunglasses i don't know all right i'm wearing sunglasses at night check that out so there's an a thumbnail a b thumbnail let's make a c thumbnail that's totally different so now we have one where it's in the middle of a park during daylight it looks basically the same except much brighter so now i have a variation a true variation that i can test with my thumbnails so those are all the ways that you can take advantage of Nano Banana right now as a creator. Try it out now on Artlist with the link below and let me know which one you're most excited about in the comments.